Hi, this is Mark Cook for Twisted Throttle. This being modern motorcycling, this, the laptop computer, is actually part of your toolkit. In particular, we're going to use it with the Hex EasyCan CAN bus controller. Now, you probably know this device is a controller for your accessories. It allows you to manage things like driving lights, a very loud horn, and other accessories through the CAN bus system on your BMW motorcycle. The cool part about that, you don't need any external switches. Everything happens through the controls that are already on the motorcycle. Now, why do we need the laptop? Because the Hex Easy Can, while it comes with software set up for about 80% of the possible applications out there, actually has a lot of really cool features that you unlock using the supplied software. It's a pretty cool thing. It's actually really easy to get started with, too. First thing you need to do is go to our website. You can download the software. There's a Mac and there's a PC version. Get that into your laptop or your desktop. Then go grab the supplied USB cable, liberate the Hex Can from under the seat, plug them in, and you're ready to start programming. So now we've opened up the Hex Easy Can configuration tool. It's connected to the bike, and we know it is because we don't have any warnings here. Now, if it weren't connected, we would see this warning, device not connected, please connect the USB cable. There are other warnings available if for some reason the Easy Can cannot see the rest of the CAN bus, and we'll demonstrate that by pulling this connector. All right, no CAN bus connection detected, please turn on ignition or check the. So, it's going to do a diagnostic to make sure it's happy talking to the bike and your computer is talking to it. So before we go too much further, let's jump into the channel configuration. This is what you're going to set as soon as you install this on the bike. Currently we have three options here. We'll start at the top. This first one, first configuration setting, you'll see the icons here. These are your driving lights. The exclamation point is your brake light and then the thing that looks like a cell phone or GPS is your, your uh, accessory. The way this configuration is set up, you have one driving light on each of the high current, that's the red and the, and the orange circuits. You have your brake light on the yellow circuit and you have your accessory on the white circuit. If you go to the next configuration, it puts the horn on the red circuit, puts the accessory on a high current circuit, and puts each one of your driving lights on one of the lower current settings. Okay, we'll explain why, why this is important later on. The way we've configured this particular motorcycle, because we've joined the two front lights, they're going to be on one circuit. So we're going to use the third configuration. That puts the horn on the red circuit. That puts the driving lights on the orange circuit together on the second of the high current circuits. And then we have the brake light on the yellow. And we have an accessory on the white. So that's how we're going to configure it. Once it's established, it's talking to the CAN bus the entire time. All we have to do is click OK and it's saved our settings. If you want to confirm that it's saved the settings, you can go back to channel configuration and see that it's in the same spot. That tells you that the hex CAN has accepted that command. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is configure the lights themselves. There's some pretty cool things going on here. The first one here, which is the light in the yellow, that's your low beam. Obviously the blue is your high beam. Now, if you look to the right of that, you're going to see a, a moon and a sun. The BMW has an ambient light sensor that the CAN bus uses to determine things like the display light. The Hex Easy CAN uses that to set a range of, of brightness for the driving lights, and you can determine that right here in the configuration setting. So in this case, we have it set up on low beam in sunlight. We're running 80% brightness. When it gets dark, we're running 70%. On the high beam, we're running the lights at 100% regardless of outside conditions. Now you can choose anywhere from zero up to 100%. Your choice. Once you've made this configuration, it sets it to the unit and stays with it. Now you can override this with the wonder wheel and change your illumination settings on the fly if you wish, but this sets the baseline settings that the unit will take up as soon as you turn it on. So some of the other things that you can do uh, with this configuration is turn off when signal is active. This is most commonly used when you have the lights close to the turn signals. When this is activated in this particular condition, what it'll do is when the turn signals are on, it will actually turn the driving lights off. That will give a little bit more contrast to the turn signals themselves. They won't get washed out in the bright uh, driving lights. The other thing you can do is select strobe when horn active. So it knows when you're hitting the horn and it will actually strobe these lights to, uh, to make people in front of you really take notice. You can also do strobe on flash to pass so that if you pull the flash to pass trigger, it will actually strobe these lights rather than make them come on and off with the high beams. 
The next stage we're going to deal with is the brake light. Now this is for an auxiliary light. This does not control the stock brake light on the motorcycle, but if you add a secondary light, you can give it some characteristics that are really pretty cool. In this case, we have the configuration set up for no flashing. You can also choose flash on braking. Now basically what this does is it flashes the auxiliary light at 4 hertz for as long as you're pulling on the brake lever. It's not sensitive to rate of change. We'll get to that in a second. But this basically will, will flash the, the, this auxiliary light as long as the brake lever or the pedal is pushed. Basically as long as the stock brake light is on. The next option is the California legal flashing. This is a requirement in California for certain modulated lights. What this system does is it, it's 4 hertz, so it's 4 flashes a second, and it goes for 4 flashes and then it goes on solid. Again, this is irregardless of the amount of stopping that you're doing. This is purely however long you have the brake light on. Now this is a cool one. The emergency stop signal, that's, that's uh, basically hex can speak for a flashing light at certain levels of deceleration. Now this is cool, so it'll come on solid unless you're braking very hard. And we can, we can set up in the configuration where that threshold is. Remember the BMW has lots of sensors and it knows its rate of change in, in space, so it's able to calculate this. The other option here is California legal with the emergency stop signal. This is sort of a hybrid of the two. It gives you the four flashes as soon as you hit the brakes, but then it looks to see if you're above the deceleration threshold. If you are at that point, it will continue to flash the light. The, flight will, the light will then go solid as soon as you've gone below the threshold of braking that you've set. The last two are pretty simple. We have the accessory. You can either enable or disable accessory power, and you can choose the amount of timeout, basically however long it stays on after you turn the ignition off. That is adjustable up to 30 seconds. The final thing is to decide whether the horn is enabled. This is something you do obviously when you connect a horn to the bike, but will power that circuit as long as the hex easy can sees that the motorcycle's horn button is pushed. Okay, there's a few more things on the screen before we move on. First of all, you can set the fuse for each one of these. I've chosen, let's go back up and look at a high current. So we know that two of these circuits are high current and two are low current. You can actually set the threshold within, within this menu from 1 amp up to 25 amps, depending on the load of the device. Remember from your best practices electrical video, you want to set this for the size wire you have, not necessarily for the expected amount of current that the unit's going to pull. In this case, we've set up two lights together. We're going to be a little cautious at 7.5 amps for both of those. Again, you can do that for each one of these based on the current. Now you notice the low current goes up to 4 amps. That's our low current setting. The horn we have set up for 20 amps, and that's about what it'll take. All right, one more thing before we go. These pages also have very handy information tabs. It tells you everything you need to know about what the settings mean and how to configure them, and that's active for all of the four major channels. The diagnostics page is really handy. If you f think that there's something not working in the wiring, you can look at this and see, is it actually getting current, and how much current is it using? This is especially handy if you're setting a fuse level and you keep popping it. You can see what it's actually consuming and decide whether you want to change that range. Okay, so that about covers it. Now you can see how the Hex EasyCan software allows you to configure the unit to give you a lot of flexibility to get it to do exactly what you want for your installation. You can read more about it at twistedthrottle.com. And oh, by the way, we have a complete installation video for the R1200GS there as well.